begun with the address checking. Um, the census is not delivered to people, it's delivered to addresses. So it doesn't go to Joe Smith, it goes to 15 years And that means the, uh, the census every 10 years has got to make sure they've got an updated addresses of all structures in the town. And in 10 years, there are, there's new construction, there are old buildings that are subdivided into apartments, so there are new addresses, there are corrections to E911 issues. Um, and that requires people on the ground actually physically checking addresses. <clears throat> and this is already started, and it's going to be going on to the end of October. And a number of local towns have had calls from citizens wondering, who is the person standing in front of my house taking my number down? What are they doing? What are they doing? Um, it's part of this address checking situation. Um, and anyone who uh, is employed by the census should, uh, will have one of these uh, what are these uh, identification checks? Uh, and we'll also have them given a full background check through the FBI. To the greatest extent possible, when we're working with local communities, people from the local communities are hired to do the address checking and the actual enumeration, which I'll get to, uh, because it's, uh, it's a lot less of a learning curve if someone knows the community and there's a lot less stress on people wondering who's standing in front of the house. If it's, oh, it's Jamie in front of my house. I wonder what she's doing there. Um, so that's where we are right now. And if people call up town hall and say, what's going on, you have a sense of exactly what's, what's happening. In March, in mid-March, the census will send uh, what is the beginning of a series of four notifications to every address that it got listed in the town. For the first time in American history, you'll be able to fill out the census online. So we're hoping most people at that first uh, notification will self-report online. It's only seven questions. Some people used to get on a long form that took them forever to fill out. That's been done away with. Uh, and replaced by something else in between the descending census. It's a seven-question census. They can respond online. They can respond by telephone. It's available in multiple languages. Uh, if they haven't responded by the, by the third, Notification, they'll get the actual census form in the mail to fill out. And then finally, if for people who have not, for addresses that have not responded, we will send out people into the community to actually do the physical, not the door of information. Um, and I want to put in a pitch right now. Uh, I have a, a job poster that I'm hoping you put up somewhere in town hall or somewhere else. As I said, the best thing we can do is hire people from the local town to do the local enumeration and the local address checking. Um, it pays $16.50 an hour, and it's completely flexible in terms of hours and days. So it's great for parents with split shifts or, or moms with kids in school or people who can work at night or on weekends and not during the week and things like that. Um, so I, I'm going to encourage you to, you know, that's one place to, to help someone get a, a part-time or full-time job. Um, the importance of this to, to Bethel is that $675 million, billion dollars in grant money every year is based on the numbers the census pulls in. And once that census is complete, it, that's 10 years worth of numbers. And so things that are dependent on census numbers are school lunch programs, women and children, housing rehab programs, fuel assistance programs. Um, most economic development grants, I would not be surprised if the Flathead Roberts FEMA grant didn't rely in part on, on the census figures somehow. So it's important that everyone be counted. And every town's got different challenges. Uh, every town that I work with has got different challenges in terms of why is there another count? Why are there you know, 3,000 people in town that only 2,500 show up in the census or something like that? And there are particular population groups that, um, certain demographics, that tend to be undercounted, uh, such as very young children, the zero five range, um, African American men from 18 to 24, single senior citizens. Um, there's a whole series of demographics. In terms of, of this town, because I've gone through, I've poured through the numbers and I do that before I go into the town. Um, this is a pretty typical town for Vermont in terms of all of those red flag issues. The one place where uh, it's, it's, it stands out a little bit is the number of rental units. There's a, a large
larger number of people who are renting either apartments or renting houses or um, a mobile home um, than generally in most of the surrounding area in, in Windsor County. Um, and so we want to make sure that these people understand that they can. Because uh, one of the, the obstacles we have is that people overthink the census. That in trying to do the right thing, they think, well, I don't own this place, so I shouldn't respond when I'm here. Or, well, I'm on the lease, but my girlfriend isn't, so we shouldn't count her here. Yes. Um, I've got, uh, my niece is living with us while she finishes her last year of college. So she doesn't really count because she'll go back home. Yes, she does. If it's a body, in, physically in the town, then it impacts the town, and this body gets counted towards the town of Evan in the census. doesn't matter whether they're citizens, it doesn't matter whether they are old enough to vote, it doesn't matter whether they are legally there or not. Um, and, and that leads to the other obstacles. A lot of people don't want to share things with the government. Well, who's going to find out about this if I answer the census? And the census is 100% confidential in that nothing, um, we, we are not permitted to release any data on a family or household or individual level. Not to ICE, not to Homeland Security, not to law enforcement, not to building and zoning, not to schools. This has been tested in the courts for over 50 years. We only release aggregated data. So very often people are afraid to say, well, yes, this is where I'm staying. They don't have to. This is not going to be shared with anybody. Um, So that's the basic rollout. Those are the challenges we face. You know, that we face. We want to make sure that every single person is happy. Um, ways the town can help with that. Frankly, we have like, you know, hosting the job poster is we can hire people from this town, better for the town. Um, if you have a listserv or a newsletter that goes out, um, you know, put the blurb in. The census is coming. It's a once in a ten year opportunity. Your child is five years old this year. Their entire school career for the next 10 years is based on the numbers that are actually produced. Um, before town meeting, you know, make, make an announcement. Remember, because that's right around the time the census is coming out. Um, please respond to the court with your civic duty, it's a constitutional mandate, and it affects the town. Um, and then if there are any other organizations in town that, have, that are particularly trusted voices, because your local people are your trusted voices that I should reach out to, I would love to know. You know sometimes there is uh, broad senior citizens groups or interfaith groups or groups who deal with particular um, demographics. That would be important for me to speak with. That's the end. I won't take any more time of your meeting because I know you've got a lot of stuff on your plate. Uh, but if you have any questions or the audience has any questions, I'm more than happy to, to respond to any anything that comes to mind. Thank you. I'll take your job out of your place. Okay. It's in here along with a bunch of specific talking points. Uh, the ones that I just mentioned that go into a little more detail. But I don't want to say anything for that. No, no, no. I'll take it down. We'll take a website and put the job out on there. Does that mean one of the items that I have to do is to do that? Does that mean one of the items that I have to do is to do that? Does that mean one of the items that I have to do is to do that? Does that mean one of the items that I have to do is to do that? so that the teachers can add that to what they're doing and teach statistics, but it also means the kids are bringing home information to the parents. And I mean, I know, I grew up in a farming family, so I know that getting to the kids in the school is a way for, you know, to get to the parents, so. Um, yeah, I'll be mean, a contact in the school time in the library. The library will have computers that you can use if they don't have any
Have a great week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
ruin them eventually. Um, so I asked Chuck, are you interested in, you know, just putting it there until the next phase of our master plan comes to fruition? And he said, no, no, I don't mind taking it down, you know, we take it down and we put it back every year. Um, so we have that as a possibility of either leaving it in place for a few years or taking it down and putting it up. And we did reach out on the fire chief. They called it as a fire department and they are more happy to flood it and whatever it is they need to do. But um, we got some. Yeah, the committee in our September meeting uh, asked CJ to say how much the money would be, how that would work. And the reason we put it off flood the year before was because we were in the process of going before the development board to get the permit to do X, to do some things at the center. So that's why we had to go before the board in November. And so this is why we did it in the last about that state because we needed to have the new layouts. Is any idea just like there's how much the line or we're talking for a line? Um, well, ballpark, not the ballpark. Okay, so the, the ring size which would very easily fit in that spot. Um, and in the research that I've done so far with two different companies, um, you want to go a little bit, you want it a little bit bigger, you know, so it can go over the sides and such. Um, we're talking anywhere from low ball, three to four hundred dollars, to, you know, almost two thousand dollars, depending on the mill, um, depending on a lot of different Variables. Okay. When, when would you have it available to the public? What time of day? Um, well, we want to do it for this winter, but I think as soon as you know, it's cold enough and you know, we have a really good winter, you know, solid degree winters. So we're, we're, um, we're shooting the, this winter on the second of January. So it would be like a sign up. Well, those are certainly things that we have not even really discussed, like who's going to man it, who's going to uh, shovel it every time it snows, who's going to... Yeah, we have a quick alert. Yeah. Well, maybe we sun down. Yeah. 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 Or it was going to be man. I mean, it would be one of those that's open and people come and use it when they use it. And yeah. And yeah. Yeah. people work. No, you're it's still okay. You might want to stay at 6 o'clock at night. Yeah. Evenings or evenings. Is there lighting? We have lighting. There's, I mean, there's minimal lighting. There's the two parking lot lights. Um, uh, Chuck had even suggested that we consider bringing in just, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, light towers. Light tower type things. I don't know what that would cost. Maybe people in town that are only excited about uh, a nice skating park would donate the use of light towers. Um, these are things that I'm, we have got to figure out. And another thing I think that we need to figure out, um, that area's not plowed to. I mean, the, 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 there's only plowing to the Ford's Floyd's driveway. Right oh, I already talked to the road farm about that. Yeah, because, yeah. That, because there's other issue where the snow is coming off and then going in underneath and, and damaging the benches. So I did talk to the road farm and told them,
Uh, I post to the Bethel Rec facility Facebook page. I mean, I did as the pool director. Um, I could certainly reach out and say, look, this is this is something we want to do. Who would be you know, who would like to volunteer to help us maintain it? And just make a list, and then just after different snowstorms, okay, you're next on the list. Would you be able to help get the ice skating rink shoveled off? Or I mean, there's a lot of different things that we haven't really even discussed or shaken out yet, but it's certainly something that I can put some time into. Yes. Um, I just want to make a comment that I've known about the, you know, the possibility of the skate park, but with people in town, I've been approached probably by half a dozen or more people that are excited that we're even considering putting in a temporary skate park. They, they think it's a wonderful idea that it'll get a lot of use um, at the ice skating rink over the winter. And, you know, there's a lot of people that used to play hockey and they don't have any place to go. And I think I think this would be a good thing for people who don't want to travel all the way to West Lebanon or somewhere else that will give them the opportunity to do something that they like. And, you know, I mean, I guess the way I'm thinking here is I mean, it's, it's a temporary structure that you're building, so I don't, I don't see the need that you need even the select board approval to look at that. You know, that would be based on, you know, the facility head and the, the rent committee and the manager for that maybe to, to do that. Um, and you know, if it was if we were talking like a permanent structure or something like that, and it wasn't part of the master plan, then probably the select board had to weigh in on that. But if it's um, a temporary structure, um, you know, maybe the the rec fund has a you know you, you have money in your fund, you know, that you can use as needed um, towards Towards that facility, um, it seems like it's a pretty good bang for your buck. You know, for a little bit invested to get a lot out of that. Um, I would just, yeah. I mean, I think the only thing that I would just tread on is I think it's a great idea. I think just obviously you need to iron out the fine details of the like David was saying, the hours. You know, things like you know who's going to see it. You know. Would you close that night, or you know, would you buy shovels and leave it there for the public, or you know, whatever that is. You know, I mean, it's, well, cost wise, it seems like it's more pretty expensive to do that for what you get out of it. And the other thing I would really like to know, I don't know if is, is you know, the, the goal eventually is to get that a year round facility. So I really do like the yeah, uh, opportunity to have something there in the wintertime rather than just have a big snowbank that's plugged up against the parking lot and there's nothing going on there for six months of the year. Because we do live in Vermont and there is snow for six months of the year. So yeah. getting in here and using it, even if it's January, February, February March, it's probably three months of the year. It's, it's great. You know, maybe there are some other programs that you can do a Friday night thing or Friday something. Or, we do have people sliding down. Yeah, so I think it'd be good to get more encompassed here in the wintertime. So, I mean, I, I mean, unless uh, well, I'm over stepping with the board, I don't see any need that you need to get our permission. I think that's a matter of all kind of three identities to iron out. And that's what you guys want to do. Then our end point was a big deal for a long time. You need to do something for the kids to get on there. They got to do that. Sometimes those things you know, don't actually sign for, for specific reasons, but I'll 
I'll reach out to Wade. Um, I'll pick my email on my own picture and let him know if you want. I think I'll wait and ask him any signing or something or change with him. Yeah. I just got a question for Dave's professional opinion on what are the costs of putting lights that exist in like a spotlight or two on the existing poles and pull the power from the light poles there and have them on the timer so you that they would go from like 4.30 to 8 or something? Uh, light poles mean the uh, street lamp, light things are there. right there in the parking lot. Um, um, I, I didn't have a point there, but that when we got, because we
safety concerns or possible um, obstacles or strange things to do with it. So maybe it would be his voice here because it's happy with it. Um, I but, um, don't think so.
thing where even though at the last session we had talked about you know how much the system is going to cost um, and then after different uh, plots of revenue money that, that the town uh, has uh, the ability to take advantage of uh, which we're in a very very good position to come away with all you know all or even more of the money that we thought about um, we still have to, so I'm just going to make it up, but let's say the town only has to pay, last time, a million dollars of the $2.8 million water system. We still have to put it out there saying that we're having a water um, bond of $2.8 million. So that doesn't necessarily mean that the taxpayers are going to have to bump up 2.8, but it does mean that we have to start with the total encompass of the project and then as those funds come in, then we take that off the top. Um, yeah. But that information will all go through um, over the next couple of um, sessions that we'll be doing. And then the, the two informational nights will be able to talk about that thoroughly. I thought he was just making six and Yeah, he was just making he was just using yeah, just figures. round numbers. I mean, so um, tonight is just kind of more of the less informative, more boring, just sign the bond yeah. document so we can move forward to the next step. Um, and then the next select board meeting, there'll be an open spot to talk about it um, if needed. And then really at this point, we're going to wait for the two informational uh, nights that we will have here on the 21st and 8th to talk about it. So, and we'll be sure. Yeah, there's a brochure right now that um, uh, Elliot uh, Wayne, excuse me, is um, helping with the brochure, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be willing to throw a number out there at all right now. Uh, we don't even have our, our 60% meeting is until October 2nd. Uh, and that's only for a 60% design layout. So we haven't really come hard and fast. Any number that we have is speculation, although we do have some some certain guarantees to a point from the drinking water division. We're not going to be on the hook for a lot, but we are going to be responsible for some. Right. And it, we, we still have some unknowns that are out there. Right. I think for us, too, the biggest, or one of the great things is obviously is that there, for us, there is obviously that there's a 50%, which is great, but then there's still more, possibly 25%. But that really is all hinging on a positive bond vote on November. And that's the big deal right there, is that because some of this money is first come, first serve, we know what we can get, but there's more eligibility for money that we, we can also qualify for, but part of that is we must have a positive bond vote in November that, that goes through, and that puts us a little bit further ahead of the line. So, um, tell your friends. <laughs> yes. It, it, it's going to be very important. Oh, yeah. Or less. Um, but so, it is a reality. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was seeing it as plainly as he just said that. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And, and again, like, like Tim said, they're still working through some of the figures on, you know, how much how much of this revenue we can use, how much we can, um, some of the pieces of the galvanized system, the lead piece, and, and things like that. But at the informational setting, we'll, we'll have those numbers. I don't know, do we have a firm commitment from Ashley on that? That we will know by that date? Oh, uh, she, no, she's, I think that she was more, she didn't give, she said that the money was there to qualify. Right. That's what she said. So. And part of that is that we've been identifying the segments in the ground to prove and verify that we have galvanized iron so it qualifies for the lead reduction. And I've more than done that. I completed a packet last week. I sent to the engineers that covered almost every street of this project. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the the future is bright. We just this is the time. And again, the faster we the faster we move, the better opportunity we have to collect these revenues. Yep. You know, if if, yep. if let's say the bond vote didn't go through, and then let's say we're back here again next year at the same time, doing this all over again. We should be looking at the same cost of the system, but with less revenues, you know. Uh, so it's very important uh, that we take advantage of whatever revenue we can get um, to do this. So. They have one of the biggest pots of money right now. Right. And they are pushing everybody that has projects like this to move this time. The other thing, too, is just, just like what we got, you know, we just got grant money for um, the air packs and things like that. Is, you know, Bethel is is situated correctly right now for receiving a lot of these grants and getting ahead of some other communities because of our need. So, um, you know, when they start comparing our need versus maybe a larger town, you know, we're probably going to have to um, have more of that revenue by. So. May I also suggest, and Lisa may be already doing this, but um, an article in the Herald. It just was in the last paper. Yeah, and she, yeah, maybe even another one right before the vote. Mm -hmm. You know, with yeah. interviews with Tim, interviews with yeah, yeah select board members, and to really just remind people because yeah. a lot of people still read the Herald that we wouldn't connect with any other way. You're absolutely right, and so we have to read uh, Marco. Lisa, the No, so we.
make motion that we authorize Pam and the town clerk to sign a resolution certificate and the declaration of intent. Second. Okay, all in favor? Um, we do shut it off and, and not fill in what that time period would be. 
then I know in the past that we've, we've looked at things in three or six month increments. So, um, I mean, I just, so we so did we get, we disconnect the south main property that got hit by the trailer truck, right? Yeah. No, we just shut it off. Well, we shut it off. Yeah. Well, we don't know what the cost of this well, because we've never actually done it, we just shut them. We, right. we just shut them off. And that, I think that's a term that's in higher views interchangeably right. and attempted sort of directly in the ordinance. Sometimes we use the term disconnect and we've got to really just shut them off or turning the wrench outside. And, but, and in all cases, everybody that's, that we have done this with have come to the table. The table that's for the future meeting, and I reach out to myself, like I said, this is happening. So. Yeah. I was, yeah, you didn't, didn't come to the DCA. He didn't. No, he has a He has a son. 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 Do you yeah. want to see about getting in, yeah. in on the 15th meeting? Sure. Are we on the board that issue with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will. So I get them on for the 15th meeting. Um, we have the P vine. We have a couple of um, email projects that have taken a little bit longer. Um, to get out there due to some engineering needs to be um, done. So one is the Peabody Holder Replacement Project. Um, and we had sent that out for an engineering uh, bid and we have um, a little bit or two. We one bidder. One bidder. One bidder. <laughs> one 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 but if we did and only bidder. So for the T line over replacement, just as, just for the engineering. Yes. Uh, the bid that we received was with Luciano in engineering, R U G G I A N O. Okay, that was it. Um, yeah, sorry, it was in the paper. Oh, yeah, I put it in. And, uh, thank you for. And the uh, the amount uh, for the engineering cost is twelve thousand. $476. And I would entertain a motion to award the Eby Covert Replacement Engineering portion to Luciano Engineering for $12,476. And I'll favor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We get uh, some FEMA updates, including the line bridge. Um, Did you see um, Lisa Delgado was here, and I, I'm sad that she left because she wanted us to know that she was very happy. You know, I visited that, and she was really happy with the work that had done. She said it's the best repair it's been in a long time, so she was very happy with that. So I'm sad that she left. Finally, someone was here. <laughs> So as far as the FEMA stuff goes, the so the first um, bid that had there which was Campbell, um, Lilyville, Whittier, um, has all been completed except we have one culvert that we're going to uh, replace on the end of Campbell uh, Camp Road area uh, that will be done here in the next uh, week time frame. Everything else is done. Um, and as Dave pointed out, we still have um, to, those culverts need to be cleaned out there. You know, like that. Yep. Oh, and but we uh, need yes. to be cleaned out. Yep. Um, there was a road through there. They're going to be out. Or there was maybe already some of them ditching some of them. And then they're working with um, to see Ron's availability. And they're going to go out and do some So, yeah, that is on that. And then the uh, Southwest Quadrant 1, um, uh, Brickville, Dunham, there. Those sections, that one has been completed. And the east quadrant, which is um, um, 
which is uh, Sanders, Christian Hill, Arnold, North Main Street um, area, that one has been included. And the Northwest, which is Gilead, um, Macintosh, right, well, it wasn't really right. Well, it's that branch. Yeah, Bio. A lot of the bridge, bridges that were up through there. That contract's probably three quarters of the way done, so that maybe the next week um, we can have all that laid done. So um, the Camp Road project, um, which was done not through FEMA but the Federal Highway, um, ninety percent of that work was done a week ago, um, and it looks like finishing up shoulders and line painting this week. So hopefully we'll done. And then um, the Geico Road Reservoir has not been started yet, but it will be done in the next couple of weeks. Um, the Bethel Mills pump station is complete. Um, and then the bridge. One off the yeah. bridge. The line bridge is on here. No. No. The uh, Oh the Bridge, yeah. Bridge is that are you saying that the temporary bridge will actually be in by Thursday? Yeah. So things are moving along. Um, you know the, the goal is to get everything done by the end of September. And have a couple of a few outlier projects. Um, and I, I think we're in a pretty good position right now. The Ronte, I did speak to um, FEMA about the Pinello Bridge. And um, so this is going in as quote unquote temporary work. And part of the sub grant agreement that we're going to be signing is going to require us to move forward with putting in the permanent bridge. So this winter, um, you know, we'll get through all the communicate work and we'll go out and we'll end up putting out um, action on somewhere. Later this fall, um, we've got to put out to a little bit of design build um, on that permanent bridge. So there's no way that you have to roll into that. Um, I found that out, or else we're not going to get our money. So, um, so in these two engineering projects, obviously the construction will be in the spring. And then we did just get handed another FEMA project because we wanted more. So we have to get the material out from under the line bridge, the bridge that's basically at Lilliesville that goes to Stockbridge, and um, that will be the bids are due tomorrow. So I am looking for the board to let me just award that to a little bidder, and then we, the little bidder myself, and Scott Jensen, is another river engineer. We'll meet out there. It's going to give them the parameters. That material is going to be all to the town garage to go with the stuff we got from pipe, so we will be having some. Um, out of material. And uh, well, that's the book. Yeah. they are by Jimmy Ricketts. We have to be out by October 15th, higher than fast, or that's why we're, you know, so it's good that bit through tomorrow. So why don't we how do you entertain motions allow Therese to um, authorize the award of the line bridge to whoever happens to be a little bit? Yes. Second. So it's, it's, no it's not. I think the underneath it is the, if I remember correctly, that the as-built was, was like five, three it was saying, I think underneath, is the distance, I don't know, the distance from the base of the river, the bottom of the bridge, or how they did it. And then they were talking about a right-of-way, which maybe, maybe Ryan can answer that. They were talking about a right-of-way in the river. I was wrong. He's like, what about, what about your right-of-way? Right, yeah, it's not, it's not going to be much different than the right way to have rods and grow yeah. the side. Yeah, no, I just didn't realize that mm -hmm. we were in the river that there was an owner, so that we would have yeah. a specific right away. But so he's going to come down and meet, and then the offer to do that, which is nice. But it's not much more than a one day project. It's a yeah. one day, maybe two day. Yeah, it's not much more than a one day. So more than a hundred people. I don't know. So then, whatever. Oh, my God. So um, that'll be done, and then it seems like we're on the wall to get things wrapped up. So.
he had, he's been talking about this, I don't know, back in April. No, not yet. I'm the holdout guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. Um, so it was, you know, brought to our attention back in April when things started to appear from the snow that, that there was a lot of um, a lot of complaints in April, early May of uh, probably a dozen or so properties with trash. Um, either, you know, stocked up next to the house or all throughout the porch or so littered, littered, littered on the ground. Um, and, um, and we did a little research and published that the town doesn't have any type of ordinance that governs trash, don't care. <laughs> um, so we, um, we had set a task to uh, Greg at the time back in May of just kind of May, June time frame of just uh, looking through some towns to see what they may have for a type of ordinance that we could look at um, based on the concerns of several citizens early in the spring. So um, it, it lost some traction over the last few months because we, you know, Greg, Greg stepped aside, um, Teresa's come in, we had all the FEMA stuff. Uh, and then we didn't want to lose a beat with the, the water pond. Um, so we, we kind of just kind of dropped this by the wayside for a while. And now we're just kind of resurrecting it. But the goal was, the goal was if the board wanted to move forward with some type of ordinance that we would, that we would put before the voters for town meeting day. So um, if you want to do that, then you know, our days are numbered to get that bigger. Um, I think we agreed upon prior that there was nothing that the board here was going to push on ourselves. It was going to be um, that we would best position it to the taxpayers for town meeting day to vote on if, if so choose. So, so there's what? Could I give you four samples? Yeah, so Teresa had gone through and uh, got us some samples of some ordinances and these are uh, well, one happened to be um, an ordinance that the town of Ethel had looked at years ago. Um, but the first one was mainly the ordinance that was more on a junkyard, junk vehicle type ordinance. It wasn't so much on trash or um, solid material type thing. It was more of a, yeah. you know, they had a fence up the gap more than three unregistered vehicles or something like that. I think that they're, some of them, as you can see, are very similar. Um, and then they had the big differences to me seem to be that, um, and, and I have to review the zoning again, because um, it, actually I review the zoning, and I tell you the zoning, excuse me, but it doesn't appear that in your zoning ordinance that you, a lot of times you say you can't have more than three unregistered vehicles, but it doesn't appear that it says that. Um, but it seems to me in these sample ordinances that the big, the biggest difference was what they were terming as the quote unquote abatement. So they were saying that the, in some cases the town, if it happened that ordinance, could say, okay, um, Therese, you got to clean up your property, and if I don't do it at, within this, you know, they give you parameters and you can do municipal fines, and if you don't, then the town could come in and clean up my property and put a lien on my property, so that when I sold or anything like that, then the town would get paid back. So some of them do have a, an, an op, that option for abatement where you can basically, if you're not going to clean it, we'll clean it and clean your house. Then there's others that didn't have that, but obviously have fines. And you can be fined for, you know, every day, basically, if it, but it occurred. So, and there would be no grandfathering. This would be everybody. Right. So, uh, so there's four samples, and they seem to have very similar. Um, but I, I asked the board, I just, I put a little report in with their agenda as part of the packet and just said, look, you know, you want to highlight the portions you like, or is there one particular you like, and then I can try to mesh them into one, and we can kind of fine tune it until, you know, we will put the whole ordinance in town report so that people could be educated on the topic for, you know, the vote. So. Right. I looked at what the town put one in last year. Did they? But theirs is more, um, buildings. Yeah. You know, 
building condition, exterior, it talks about inspections of rental properties. And right, which is, uh, Burlington is like that too. Yeah, yeah Burlington is the same way. They actually, because um, I have um, two daughters at Wilmington and County, they actually have uh, like their own uh, building codes and some of the inspection, and it's quite a thing. I, uh, so these were, I was looking for towns of either similar size or, or that I thought were well written. So, and there was, so that's how I and like we had said a few months ago, we started talking about it. You know, it's a very slippery slope when you start talking about ordinances. So, you know, we might be just talking about trash now, but an ordinance of trash could turn into an ordinance of cutting your grass because it's over 12 inches top or something. You know, I mean, so there's, there's, you know, ordinances a lot of times start off with good meanings, and at the end of the day, it could be, you know, your house can't be painted green, it has to be white and yellow. Right. right. There so, are um, I think the idea for the board that we've kind of tasked ourselves is to is to come up with an ordinance that deals with the concerns of the citizens from the spring that doesn't go overboard um, and bring that before them the town meeting and go on themselves. Because we've already found that in case you haven't been to a prior meeting is the health officer doesn't have any teeth here to deal with this. So when you have So do we want to, I mean, I, I know on my end, I've had a chance to read through them, but I hadn't really had an opportunity to start putting, I like this one, but not this one. Well, what do you think is, it's hard. Should we get a little more time to ourselves to yeah. go through it and then yeah. the next meeting we Yeah. Or highlight pieces that you like, right. and then I can, if each one of you compares what you like, then I can put you all together and say, okay, and then match that into one version. But don't you want to see that draft? 
allergic see it. Yeah, and then, you know, I guess ideally would be see the draft, make any yeah. fine edits, get it out to the public yep. at another meeting, and then okay. move well, forward with it. And you, get, you all get me your stuff as fast as you can, okay. and we will run it. Oh, well. <laughs> I have any input and then we can change this and then 
and will come before. So, um, so he has he has written one, and he's starting on another um, okay. policy about certain things. So, so it's important to make sure that policies in place protect the town as well as the office. Um, so, just want to make sure that for anything happens. Yes, so um, I have drafted the road crew, um, the, there's a draft on the website right now, so I have like, the draft one for the um, highway um, workers and also for the equipment operator. Um, so I asked for feedback from the road crew. I've gotten some <coughs> draft on the website. I just got some more feedback the other day from one of them, so I need to tweak that. Um, once those are both done, then I'm going to move on to the road performance job description. So once those are, those job descriptions are done, obviously they're going to be signed by um, the employee. I know that Kelly already has a um, job description because we had done that. <coughs> I think when we had done that about two years ago when I came on, um, updated her job description and had updated the bookkeeper's job description about a year. So the in-house, obviously the town clerk is all statutory. Um, I don't, I, I think, no, not so much. So yes, yeah, so the pool will be working on job descriptions. So everybody gets a job description. And actually Oscar uh, spoke to me about that today. And, and I, while um, obviously the deal is a statutory, we'll going to iron that out too. So everybody has one. So I have been working. But um, so yes, and then of course uh, I don't know uh, Morgan no right and then he has a partial he has a partial I have mine is complete okay that's right. so so Tim's is good and um, and uh, so there's only a few people that actually have them so we will that is definitely hi I'm a prayer. 